Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 17 verse 10, Mark chapter 5 verse 12, and Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Thank you for the strength that you have caused us to have, Lord. We thank you for helping us to press through the hard times. And we know that an end is near. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Luke chapter 17, verse 10. So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have done what was our duty. All right. And so this is the parable that is speaking about um, a servant's attitude towards the work and the master. Right. So here um, Jesus spoke of a parable about um, as as people who he was he was speaking actually pr from the perspective of the master. Right. He wasn't speaking from the perspective of the servant. He said, if you as masters would act this way, basically. Right. So he was he was saying, OK, if you who have servants um, how would you act in this circumstance? Wouldn't you have the servant, uh, you know, doing what you would have them do out in the field, then they would come in and you wouldn't have the servant just come in and, and get dressed and sit down and eat. You would make sure that all the other duties are done first. Um, then you would have them dress and serve you. And then afterwards they can eat. And in the same way, that is how we live our lives, right? We work for the father. We do his will. We keep doing his will until we have completed his will, right? And then after everything is said and done, can we sit down and we can eat, right? Then we can eat. We can receive our reward when the, the work is completed, I think I've told you guys that one time um, and I was um, I lay down and I knew that the Lord still had um, scriptures um, for me to do. And I was just I was tired, honestly, but I, I knew Christ wanted really me to press in during that tired time. And he really wanted me to complete the work. And so I was just like, well, I'm going to go and lay down. And so I went and laid down and I had a dream. I had a dream of this parable and it was, um, it was a man, he was standing there and he showed me where to mow the lawn and I, I mowed the lawn. And then he showed me another spot. He had a clipboard and he showed me another spot. He wanted me to mow the lawn and I was like, okay. And so I did that spot too. And then it was like, he kept doing it. And I was like, well, I've already done all of the, the stuff that you've told me to do. And you just keep telling me to do more stuff. And he just said, you know, mow the lawn. He was just showing me the next spot that I needed to mow the lawn. And I woke up from that dream knowing exactly what parable he was trying to show me. He was showing me that I needed to keep going until I was done, right? I was done not when I said I was done. I was done when he said I was done, right? And that's how we need to have our attitudes. We need to be humble. We need to realize there is an end to the clipboard. There's an end to the task. There's an end to the assignments. But it's not when you say you're done. It's when God says you're done. He is the master, not us, right? We need to be humbled and thankful that we have a job right? That we have a job to do and that it needs to be completed. And we need to trust in the fact that there is an end. Don't let the enemy just say to you, oh, you're going to be doing this forever. He's going to do it until you run off a cliff. No, that is for the enemy to do. He's going to run off the cliff. We are going to keep going until we're done. And then when we're done, we're going to have rest. We're going to have to, we, we're going to be able to sit down at the table and eat is what the parable says, right? After all those things, those tasks have been completed, then the servant can sit down at the table and eat. God has reward for you. He has he has a great banquet for you. He has a great 
feast waiting for you. Get done with the task. Get done with the assignment that he gives you. Be grateful. Be humble by your assignment. And the things that he tells you to do in this life and, and be grateful that you're a part of it. Amen. That's a gift. Amen. All right. And so to be a part of this household of faith is a gift. Um, Mark chapter five, verse 12 is the second verse that the Lord gave me. And they be, and they begged him saying, send us to the pigs, let us enter them. All right. And so this is actually the running off of the 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 demons running off the cliff, actually. And so um the enemy um was inhabiting this man through demons, right? Uh many demons. When Christ asked him their name, he said uh Legion, for he was many. And so there were many, many de demons inhabiting this man. He was walking around in the graveyard where the tombs were. And that's where he had to live because they could not bind him up anymore. He kept breaking the chains. He kept um, getting back loose and, and just out of control. And so when these demons encountered Christ immediately, they knew who he was. They called him the son of God and basically said, like, what do you have to do with us? Like, you know, d let us stay in the region. They didn't want to be cast out. Right. They didn't want to be put down. And so they knew that they only had a certain amount of time in the world right? To corrupt men and to, to, to be able to inhabit these men and to be able to do their, their bidding for Satan. And they knew that when that was over, that was over. They were going to be in the pit of hell and then cast into the lake of fire as part of their judgment that Christ was going to render to them. And so when they saw him, they were like, Hey, wait a second. It's not our time yet. Right. But at the same time, they knew that Christ had the authority to do whatever he wanted to at whatever time he wanted to. And so when he encountered these demons, um, they asked basically for a mercy, right? So they asked to be cast into those pigs that were nearby. It was like 2,000 pigs. And so this 1,000 demons inhabited this 2,000 pigs in like a herd and Christ had mercy on them. He he cast them into those pigs. And those pigs, of course, ran off the cliff. He sent the unclean into the unclean. And they ran off the hill, right, into the depths of the sea. And so they were drowned. They drowned the pigs. And so um, that is what the fate of that um, that that legion of demons was and so the thing was i felt like holy spirit was saying was there will be an end of mercies right that was a mercy that he showed to the um to the spirits but guess what there's an a mercy ending coming just like the end of the assignment there's also a mercy that is going to be ending right um the the end of the time frame of of the reign of these demons right the end of the time frame of the reign of satan satan only has so much time left Right. And so there's a, a end coming for him, just like there's an end coming for the work. There's an end coming for the reign of the enemy. And so God is is coming to an end of mercies. He's coming to an end and, and there's going to be a great judgment that is received um, for all of the corruption and the evil that has been done um, with man and in this earth. All right. And so the third verse that the Lord gave me was Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse 12. Sweet is the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats little or much, but the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. All right. And so this is speaking of um, the the ending of of the labor, right? Um, there is an ending of our labors that is coming. There is a rest that is coming. There is a sweetness of sleep that is coming. Not like the sleep of this world, but a resting 
from the work. Amen. God is letting us know that this resting from the work is soon to come. You want to make sure you're a laborer when, when that rest comes, because you don't want your work to start when the laborers are supposed to be um, resting, right? We want to be coming up to our rest and not coming up to a, a beginning of working. It says sweet is the sleep of a laborer. We are about to come into that sweet sleep. It says whether he eats little or much, but the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. So in this world, we have suffered, right? We have suffered through the labor as well as we have suffered through trials, afflictions, tribulations that have come with being saved, right? And and sometimes it's the suffering of not having enough. It's the suffering of being tired. It's the suffering of wanting to have your feel, but not having it, right? But you know, you had the feel of Christ. You know, you had his covering in this world. You were living for the city to come and not for this city. So here it says, sweet is the sleep of a laborer. We are coming to that sweet sleep, you guys, and end of the labors where we can sit down and eat, right? Not a little, but we can eat much. It says whether he eats little or much, so that is that is saying that there will be a rest, right? And and the thing is, you know, whether you have done a whole lot of work or you have done a lot of work, the rest is coming, right? If you have done the will of the Father, right? Hopefully you've completed your task so that you have some riches to enjoy. But whether it be a little, a little sleep or, I mean, a little food or much food, meaning a great reward or a, a small reward, um, it's coming, right? It's coming. Whether he eats little or he eats much, it is coming. It's as sweet as the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats little or much, but the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. Right. So there is coming a time as well where those who have eaten much in this world, they are going to come to no rest. Right. The rest is for those that enter in it and have completed the labor. Right. The rest is coming for those who who have put in work. Right. But for those who have not, who have enjoyed the the riches and the fullness of this world now is coming their their labor. They won't experience that rest. They won't experience that sleep. Right. It's not a physical sleep. This is coming an ending of labors. So. God has great riches and wealth in store for you. There is an end coming, not only an end for um, the work, but also an end for the enemy um, and his reign. So God has great things in store for you. Continue to labor for him, doing every task and completing every task until you have completed the work. There's an end to the list. It is very, very near. We just have to put our hope and our trust in him that we are close and we can continue on and endure. Rejoice in your sufferings. It is going to cause you to endure. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for the many blessings that you have blessed us with. We ask you, God, to forgive us for all of our sins. Help us to run on in this race and not give up. Help us to endure into the end. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.